Hey there, I'm Jennifer Thompson. Before I dive into my story, do me a quick favor and hit that like and subscribe button, would you? Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. I'm 32, killing it in the marketing world, and living in the Chicago burbs with my husband, Mark. We've been married for five years. Babe, have you seen my blue tie? The one with the stripes? Mark called from our bedroom one morning. I rolled my eyes, smiling. Check the back of the closet door. You know, where it always is. Found it. What would I do without you, Jen? These little moments, they were our thing. Movie nights where we'd quote every line, inside jokes that made no sense to anyone else, dreams of having kids someday. It all seemed perfect. But then things started to feel... off. Mark was working late more often, coming home with his mind somewhere else. How was your day, hun? I'd ask, and he'd just grunt, barely looking up from his phone. One night, I decided to surprise him at the office. I showed up with his favorite takeout, but his assistant Amber said he'd left early. Weird, right? I brushed it off, focusing on our upcoming anniversary. I was so excited I could barely contain myself. I even called my best friend Sarah to gush about my plans. Sarah, you won't believe what I've got planned for Mark and me. Spill it, girl. I booked us this amazing cabin upstate. It's got a hot tub, wine tasting nearby, the works. Damn, Jen. Mark's one lucky guy. He better appreciate all this. I laughed it off, but a tiny part of me wondered if he would. Two days before our anniversary, I was putting the finishing touches on everything. I'd even wrapped Mark's gift, a vintage watch he'd been eyeing for months. That's when he dropped the bomb. Hey, Jen, Mark said, not quite meeting my eyes. I, uh, I've got some news. My stomach dropped. What's up? The office needs me to go on a business trip. It's last minute, but I can't say no. I'll, I'll be gone for a week. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. A week? But our anniversary? I know, I know, I'm so sorry, babe. I'll make it up to you, I promise. I wanted to scream, to cry, to throw something. Instead, I just nodded, trying to be the understanding wife. It's okay. Work is important. We can celebrate when you get back. As Mark packed his bags that night, I couldn't shake this feeling in my gut. Something wasn't right, but I pushed it down. After all, we were Mark and Jennifer Thompson. We were solid weren't we? Little did I know that business trip was about to change everything. But that's a story for another day. Remember, life isn't always what it seems, folks. Stay tuned for what happens next in this crazy journey of mine. The office was a blur. I'd been staring at the same spreadsheet for hours, not really seeing it. My mind was stuck on Mark, on our ruined anniversary plans, on the gnawing feeling in my gut that something wasn't right. Earth to Jennifer? Sarah's voice snapped me out of my daze. Girl, you look like you've seen a ghost. What's going on? I spilled everything to Sarah over coffee in the break room. It felt good to let it out. Remember how Mark and I met? God, we were such kids back then. Oh yeah, the infamous frat party incident. You spilled your drink all over him, right? I couldn't help but laugh. And he still asked me out. We were inseparable after that. It wasn't all smooth sailing, though. That's right. You guys had that rough patch right after graduation, didn't you? Yeah, we almost broke up. But we worked through it. I thought... I thought we could work through anything. Just then, my phone rang. It was Mark's office. Mrs. Thompson? This is Linda from accounting. Mark forgot to sign some important paperwork before his business trip. I was wondering if you could swing by and sign for him? I frowned. His business trip? I thought all trips had to be approved by accounting first? There was a pause. I'm sorry, but there's no record of any business trip for Mark this week. My world tilted. After hanging up, I turned to Sarah, my hands shaking. He lied. Mark lied about the trip. Jen, maybe there's an explanation. But I was already pulling up our shared credit card statement on my phone. My heart sank as I scrolled through the charges. Expensive restaurants in Miami. A suite at the Ritz-Carlton. This isn't a business trip, I whispered. This is... this is a vacation. 
Sarah hugged me tight as the tears started to fall. But sadness quickly gave way to anger. I was going to get to the bottom of this. That night, I went through Mark's computer. I know, I know, invasion of privacy and all that. But something in me needed to know the truth. And boy, did I find it. There they were, dozens of messages between Mark and his assistant, Amber. Flirty, intimate messages. Plans for their getaway in Miami. It had been going on for months. I can't wait to have you all to myself, one message from Amber read. No more sneaking around. Mark's reply made me sick. Just a few more days, babe. Jen doesn't suspect a thing. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Five years of marriage and this is what it came to? Before I knew what I was doing, I had my phone out dialing Mark's number. Hey, honey, how's... Cut the crap, Mark. I know about Amber. I know about Miami. Silence. Then, Jen, I can explain. Explain what? How you've been lying to me for months? How you chose your little fling over our anniversary? It's not... It's complicated. Amber and I, we just... Just what, Mark? Just decided to throw away our marriage? To make a fool out of me? I could hear the defeat in his voice. I'm sorry, Jen, I never meant for this to happen. But it did happen, and you let it. God, I can't even look at you right now. Jennifer, please. I hung up. My hands were shaking, but I refused to cry. Not for him, not anymore. As I sat there in our quiet house, surrounded by photos of happier times, I made a decision. Mark Thompson might have broken my heart, but he wasn't going to break me. This wasn't the end of my story. It was just the beginning of a new chapter. The next few days were a blur. I felt like I was moving through molasses, everything slow and heavy. But I refused to let Mark's betrayal define me. I had Sarah and my sister Emma on speed dial, their support keeping me from drowning in self-pity. You're stronger than this, Jen, Emma said during one of our late-night calls. Remember when we were kids and you broke your arm? You still finished that science project one-handed. I couldn't help but laugh. Yeah, and it looked like a tornado hit it. But you did it. You always do. Those words stuck with me as I walked into the office the next day. Our team was pitching for a major account, and I'd be damned if I let my personal life derail my career. All right, team, I said, surprising myself with the strength in my voice. Let's knock this out of the park. I threw myself into the project, staying late, coming in early. My boss, Tom, noticed. Jennifer, this proposal is incredible. Where did all this come from? I shrugged, allowing myself a small smile. Just focused on what I can control, I guess. Meanwhile, I was taking steps to reclaim my life. I met with a lawyer, Rachel, to understand my options. Given the circumstances, Jennifer, you're in a strong position here, Rachel said, her voice steady and reassuring. We can push for a favorable settlement. I nodded, feeling a weight lift off my shoulders. I don't want to drag this out. I just want an... I want to move forward. I also started seeing a therapist, Dr. Patel. Our sessions were tough, but necessary. It's okay to feel angry, Jennifer, she said during one particularly emotional session. Anger can be a powerful motivator for change. As news of Mark's affair spread, I was overwhelmed by the support I received. Friends, family, even acquaintances reached out. What surprised me most were the calls from Mark's colleagues. Jen, it's David from marketing, one such call began. Look, I... I feel terrible. I should have said something sooner. My heart raced. Said something about what, David? He sighed heavily. This isn't the first time Mark's done this. There was an intern a couple of years ago, and before that... Each revelation was like a knife, but also a confirmation. I wasn't crazy. I wasn't overreacting. Mark was the problem, not me. It was Sarah who dropped the final bombshell. She'd done some digging of her own. Jen, you're not going to believe this, she said, her voice a mix of disgust and excitement. Amber? She's got a history. She's done this before at her last two jobs. She targets married execs gets them to buy her stuff, then moves on to the next victim. I felt a strange calm wash over me. So I was just another notch on her belt? 
and Mark fell for it hook, line, and sinker? Looks like it. Jen, I'm so sorry. But I wasn't sorry. Not anymore. I was angry, yes, but also determined. Mark and Amber thought they could play me for a fool? They had another thing coming. Sarah, I said, a plan already forming in my mind. I think it's time we turn the tables on them. They want to play games? Let's show them how it's done. As I hung up the phone, I felt a surge of energy. Mark and Amber had no idea what was coming their way. They thought they'd broken me, but they'd only succeeded in lighting a fire. And I was ready to burn their little fantasy world to the ground. The day of the big pitch arrived, and I was ready. Months of hard work, late nights, and countless revisions had led to this moment. As I stood in front of the client, I felt a surge of confidence I hadn't experienced in years. And that's why our campaign will not only increase your market share, but also solidify your brand as an industry leader, I concluded, my voice steady and sure. The room erupted in applause. Tom, my boss, was beaming. Jennifer, that was phenomenal. I've never seen a presentation like that. Later that week, Tom called me into his office. Jennifer, we're promoting you to senior VP of marketing. The client was blown away by your pitch. I could barely contain my excitement. Tom, I... Thank you. This means everything to me. As I was setting up my new office, Sarah burst in, practically bouncing with excitement. Jen, you won't believe what's happening downstairs. Turns out, karma works in mysterious ways. Mark's affair with Amber had become public knowledge. I watched from afar as his carefully constructed world crumbled. Did you hear? Johnson & Johnson pulled their account. I overheard one colleague whisper to another. They said they couldn't work with someone who lacked integrity. I couldn't help but feel a twinge of satisfaction. It wasn't just about revenge. It was about justice. My personal life was flourishing, too. I'd moved into a new apartment, filled with artwork and books I'd always wanted, but Mark had dismissed as too artsy. One evening, as I was enjoying a glass of wine on my balcony, my phone buzzed. It was Lisa, a mutual friend from our old social circle. Jen, I thought you should know. Amber's moved on. She's been seen around town with Robert from finance. Mark's a mess. I sighed, not out of sadness, but relief. Thanks for letting me know, Lisa. How are you doing? As we chatted, I realized how much I'd missed these connections these friendships I'd let slide during my marriage. A few days later, Mark showed up at my office, looking disheveled and desperate. Jen, please. I've changed. I realize now what I've lost. Give me another chance. I looked at him, really looked at him, and felt... nothing. No anger, no sadness, just a calm certainty. No, Mark. I deserve better. I deserve someone I can trust. That's not you. It never was. The company gala was the icing on the cake. As I stood on stage, accepting an award for my work on the recent campaign, I couldn't help but notice Mark in the crowd. He'd been demoted, relegated to a junior position in a different department. Success isn't just about achieving goals, I said into the microphone. It's about integrity, about being true to yourself and those around you. It's about rising above challenges and becoming the best version of yourself. As applause filled the room, I caught Mark's eye. For a moment I saw regret there, but then I turned away, focusing instead on the smiling faces of my colleagues and friends. Later, surrounded by well-wishers, I found myself laughing more freely than I had in years. Sarah nudged me, grinning. Look at you, Miss Senior VP. You're glowing. I smiled back, feeling a warmth spread through my chest. You know what? I feel like I'm finally myself again, maybe even a better version. As the night wound down, my phone buzzed. Mark's name flashed on the screen. Without hesitation, I declined the call. Everything okay? Sarah asked, noticing my momentary distraction. I smiled, slipping my phone back into my purse. You know what? Everything's perfect. The story of Jennifer and Mark's tumultuous relationship has come to an end. Now I have a question for you. Do you think Jennifer should have given Mark a second chance? Was cutting him out of her life completely the right move? Or should she have considered forgiveness?
Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your experiences and opinions matter.